So if you're new here, my name is Tarek. I've been both a full-time leather artisan and knife maker for many, many years. Uh, my work in both genres, like the leather you see behind you and the knives have gone around the world. And with this channel, I'm hoping to pass on some of those skills, tips and tricks that have helped me along the way. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be making a chevre leather wallet. Um, I think this is a great introduction into luxury leather work, both because of the type of leather that I'm gonna be using, as well as the, te the techniques that are um, gonna allow this project to come together. There are some advanced uh, techniques that are gonna be learnt in this video. Um, scarving is one of those things that is essential for doing any kind of luxury leather work where you're wanting to get the finesse of your edges down. Um, and I think the really cool thing is about doing a project like this is that it gets you to stretch your skills. So no matter what form of leather work you prefer doing, uh, doing these different kinds of projects um, really gets you to, I don't know, tie into, I guess, the different kinds of work that you enjoy, enjoy doing um, and improves the quality of everything that you get to do. So let's get started on this video. Okay guys, so in this project, I'm, I'm gonna be using two different shades of the chev leather. I'm gonna be using a beige as well as a slate. Uh, that's gonna bring a nice contrast to the work. And then I'm gonna be combining that with the lint cable thread in a pronunciation, I don't know what color this is, Ardois, but it's a slate color as well, which I would call a, a slate color. Um, it's like a dark gray. So that's what the color is. Those are gonna work nicely together and it's certainly gonna give a luxury feel to it. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And um, the other thing is the full pattern that I'm gonna be using for this project, I am going to make available and it will be linked below. Uh, so you can hop on and grab that as well if you'd like to support this video and this work in a, another way. Okay guys, so if you have gone to my website and got a copy of the pattern for yourself um, and following along as a full on tutorial of here, the first thing you can do is go and print out that pattern and cut it out onto a piece of thick board. Um, I just use a, a 380 gram uh, cardboard. So that's what I'm using over here. And the next thing I'm gonna be doing on the chev is I'm gonna be turning that piece of leather upside down. So I'm gonna be doing my marking on the back side of the leather. The reason why I do that is that obviously as I go along and I cut the leather, I don't want to leave any of the markings of the leather pen that I'm using on top of the leather. So I'll mark on the bottom side of that leather. Uh, but also to be able to even start that process, I first need to know that there's no blemishes uh, um, and the grain structure of the leather is what I'm wanting out of the different pieces of the pattern that I'm gonna be using. So I'll first check to go and have a look where I'm actually wanting to place my pattern, obviously on the top side. I can see that that section over here is where I'm wanting to work. So I'll just reverse that and take the base piece of my pattern and mark it with the leather pen on the side. These pens work really, really well, um, especially when you're working with these kinds of leathers. Um, obviously when I'm working with a vegetable tan leather, I prefer using a scratch awl uh, which is basically just a, a rounded sharp edge because it gives a nice scratching, uh, the nice scratch line that you can follow along. But this leather is a little bit trickier. Um, so one of these leather pens works great. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is now, I'm gonna continue marking out all the different pieces of uh, the pattern to make this uh, 
card wallet. I'm gonna cut them out and then I'll get back onto video with the next steps. While I'm busy cutting out the, the leather over here, I just want to sh let you guys know um, I'm going to be using a variety of different types of knives. This is the pattern knife that I make. Um, I use this quite extensively in my own leather work. Uh, one of the benefits is on any of my straight cuts I don't have to use a ruler uh, because of the curvature that I've put into this blade. But there's so many other ways to cut so if you don't have one of these this is where my leather work started. I started with an Alpha clicker blade. Um, it cuts a good, uh, a good cut, but also if you've got one of these little, uh, one of these little handles at least, I'll also make the blade now that's available inside of them out of a premium steel. So don't think that you need to have the all the all the tools that I have. Um, you are going to need a high quality scarving knife though if you're going to uh, continue the journey of doing luxury leather work. Um, this is the one that I make. Uh, many of you will know this knife. Many of you will actually even have this knife. Uh, but there are other options out there. So I've cut out all the various pieces of the card wallet. If you are following along with the pattern, you may have even already noticed this, but the main body of the card wallet, the pieces will be perfectly matched, the correct size. But the pockets, the card pockets that are going to be going onto the, onto the body of the item is slightly longer. So you can see there on the, on the sides, let me turn it upside down, you even see it better. It's slightly oversized on both pieces. So both pieces, both, uh, um, both the cards are slightly oversized. So what this does is once you've glued down the piece, which we're going to get to later, this is going to be trimmed off and your edges are all going to match up, I wouldn't say a lot better, uh, but they, it's certainly going to be easier to, to finish off. And this way it kind of gives you the allowance of uh, sometimes leather stretches, sometimes leather moves, and when you give yourself just a slight bit of allowance, like two millimeters on ex excess on each side, so whether you're following along with the pattern or you're making your own pattern here, yeah, just having that little bit of excess over there gives you the allowance to trim off all the, all, all the different um, parts and have a nice flush edge. And also quickly while, you, while I'm on this, you'll see that the card, po the, 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 the card pocket that's going in the middle has got this sort of a T-shaped taper to it. Um, this is going to give a, a really nice finish when the other pocket goes on top of it. Yeah. Guys, a quick little tip here before I carry on. As you might notice, the leather is kind of curled and got its own movement in it. So one of the things that I like to do, especially with these chrome tan leathers, which the, the chevre is, um, is I'm going to go put a medium heat iron to it. So I'm going to put a piece of fabric over the back side of the, of the leather. Um, get that iron up to a medium temperature and then just gently iron the, uh, the leather and that's going to straighten all of this out and it's going to make working with the rest of the project far much easier. So I've come back, I've got some nice flat pieces after putting them under some heat. You can see everything is beautifully flat and now it's going to be much easier to work with. So the next step of starting to put this project together, the main body of this card wallet um, the only edges we're going to be touching right now will be the top edge. Uh, so it'll be the top edge. On the middle card pocket, it will be the top edge as well, as well as some scarving. And on the bottom pocket, there will also be the top edge will be completed. And I will also do some scarving around the bottom. So what scarving allows for, guys, scarving allows to take which would be the, I don't know, six millimeters thick of leather, and which is way too thick for an edge in my opinion, especially for luxury leather work. So if you take all the pieces of leather we've got here now and put them together, that's a very, very thick edge that would show up on the side of your wallet. 
Um, so what the scarving does now is it's going to thin out that leather to a point where that edge has got a beautiful detail to it. There is a full video on how I scarve at least with the scarving knife that I make. You can also go and watch that in detail about a scarving technique. Uh, one of the things that I definitely recommend is scarving on a piece of granite, glass or marble and doing it on the edge of the item. A lot of guys I see try and scarf flat in the middle of their table. Um, this makes it very, very, very tricky. So rather move your piece of leather to a specific edge that you find comfortable. Guys, something you'll notice over here is that I haven't marked the width of my scarving, where I've actually done the scarf on all the different edges. Now, the reason why that is, is because I've done hundreds of meters of scarving during the duration of my uh, leather craft. But what I would suggest is, if the scarving is, is new to you, um, I have around about a half an inch, which is 12 millimeter scarf, which I do on general. Um, I don't even know what this is, let's have a look. This is about 12.5 millimeters. Um, so plus minus, I was correct on that, but around about half an inch to 12 millimeter, I, I have that as sort of a standard distance that I scarf on these kinds of projects. Um, so take your pen and just mark it out if you need to um, until, you, until it becomes, I guess, a habit for you. Guys, what I'm doing now is I'm putting a edge detail onto the leather. It's basically a crease line. Um, you do that with a creaser. I made these ones myself. Let me know if you wanted to know how to make one of these. Maybe that could be a video that I actually do. But if you don't have one of these, you can also purchase them in an electric version. Um, so this is an electric creaser, and that's what I'm doing with these edges. It just gives a nice finesse and a finishing uh, to any kind of a luxury product. So that's how you do it. All right guys, so, so what I'm doing now is I'm applying edge coat to the tops of all the various pieces of this card wallet. The edge paint that I'm using is Unitas. It comes from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. There is a full video on how I do the edge painting process uh, on the channel. So if you're needing a refresher on that, or if it's your first time doing it, um, it, that might be helpful. The one tip that I can say is, lighter coats is better. Um, you don't have to put these big heavy coats on. So I like to do light coats. It gives me a much more even finish, um, and everything just looks a lot better. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the edge paint to dry, the different layers of edge paint that I'm putting onto the wallet, I'm gonna do the logo. I'm doing the logo on the bottom piece of, of the leather, so in other words, the bottom card pocket. I use an arbor press for this. This is a, a, um, a lightweight arbor press, half ton arbor press. You'll be able to purchase one of these from any machine shop supplier. Um, and then I use a brass stamp that has my logo on it. 
So I think one, one of the, I guess one of the things that really kind of brought my own personal craft together for me is that moment you put your, your stamp on it. Um, I don't know, is there something special about going, I made this item. So again, I'm just using, I'm using my little mini camping blowtorch just to gently heat up the, the logo. Um, I don't get this hot, guys. It's, I basically wait for it to be, it's hot, but it's not going to like burn my fingers. And then I've obviously just marked it here, so I know that this is the top of my logo and that's the center point. So that just kind of gives me a position of um, accuracy when I'm positioning and marking the logo. And also because I've heated the logo up now, I'll just check there, make sure that it's still centered, which it is. I can just put a slight amount of pressure on. I'm using my thumb. Um, there's a lot of pressure that's concentrated on that point. So I'll just hold it there for, I don't know, 10 seconds, depending on the type of leather that I'm using. Um, and that's that. And there's my logo. Okay guys, so if you are following along with the pattern, with the PDF pattern, you'll notice that there are lines going across the main body compartment, um, which is obviously the positioning for your card pockets, all right? That'll give you your height of your card pockets, a way to position them on your piece of leather. But what I like to do is I've got that pattern now on my piece of leather, and I've got it onto the top edge of the piece of leather, and I take the pricking iron that I'm gonna be using for this project, and I'll take that iron and position it where the top tooth needs to be and where the bottom tooth needs to be. Now this, uh, so what that does is now, so I'll position that, that, um, that tooth where it needs to be. And from that, what I can see is that yes, I'm in the correct position. The pattern is uh, correct. Um, I've obviously worked out all the details of this pattern. So the pattern has got uh, the correct sizing in for an eight SPR stitch, which works very well for um, this more I don't know, finer leather work, let's call it. Uh, all right, so once you've checked that it, everything is correct, you know where you can position this uh, card pocket now. So what I like to do is there, I will just take my awl and I'll put a, a mark. So I've got a definite mark over there where that side will be. I'll do the same on the opposite side. So I'll get that all lined up. I'll make sure again, just to check that everything is working, and it is. I'll take my all again, and mark onto the line. So I now know that that point there, and that point there, is the height marking of the pocket. And that's also gonna give me, which is the next steps now, because we're gonna have to stitch this, uh, um, this layer on over here. But it's also gonna give me the marking of where to glue. So what I'm gonna do is now, I'm holding the, the, the pocket in its position of where it's going to be sitting. And then I'm gonna take my leather pen again, because this is obviously all going to be hidden anyway. And I'm going to mark the position of where that pocket sits. And the reason why I do that is so I can now take my awl and scratch up this area, which is gonna open up the, the surface layer of the leather, and um, it's gonna allow your glue to sit over there. So this is gonna allow this whole thing to be glued into place before you start your stitching. So what I've done now is I've glued the, the first of the card pockets on, which is the contrasting color. I've now marked my stitching holes at the bottom of the pocket, and I'm gonna stitch that on.
guys, something I didn't mention in my stitching video, if you're going to be watching that as well, um, is, well, obviously I was working with a different type of thread in that video, but whenever I work with a uh, linen cable thread, which is a natural fiber linen thread, the linen cable, I feed the needle through twice. So I leave a little gap and I feed it through a second time. Um, so I follow the same principle, I'll close the loop, just like I did on the stitching video. The only difference being there was only a single a single part where the needle went through and um, whenever I work with the link cable I'll do it twice it's not as strong as a poly thread guys um, and I'll just pull it over and there's the there's your thread ready for stitching needle and thread. So I've just stitched on the bottom piece of the middle pocket. What I'm going to do is now, before I glue on that last piece, is again, same technique we used earlier. I'm going to take that, the pattern, if you're working from the pattern, um, it will be correct. But just so that you can just check over there to make sure that everything is still where it needs to be. Yes, it is. Everything lines up. And you can go ahead and... Uh, mark that in the same way. So I'm sending myself a little mark over there. There's two reasons why I'm going to mark this. I'm going to show you now. So I would have marked each side of where that is going to sit. And this will be the last little piece of glue that I need to put on over here. So I'm just going to scratch that little bit off over there. You can see that I've already glued the, the rest of the pocket. So I'm just opening up the fibers on the piece of leather over here. So obviously what that does is um, when you glue the top part down uh, there's glue everywhere. It holds it in place while you're preparing to stitch. Alright so my next steps now uh, after that glue is dried I'll be gluing that pocket on. Once that is glued on I'm just going to be gluing around the whole detail of the wallet putting the two parts, two components together and then we'll be stitching up the whole project. Just quickly before I glue on the other pocket, I'm just going to trim off the, the excess. I'm going to put my knife right next to it and then just take it off. I've already done the other side. Um, this just allows me to see when I'm putting the other pocket on where the exact edge is. So I'm about to glue the pieces together, now the main parts of the body with the pockets on. So you're going to take the pattern, put that at the bottom half of, uh, the, the, on the bottom piece at least, because what this is going to do, it's obviously just creating a separator uh, for the glue. Now the reason why I like to glue like this, so what I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll pick that up and I'll, I'll touch the corners together. So there I have a spot now where the, where the corners come together but I also have a separator in between them so that nothing else touches at that point. Then what I do is I go to the opposite corner and I put that corner together. Guys, this is super important because this is how you're gonna get all your pieces to, to really line up. So I've got corner to corner and now I've got the center piece that isn't yet glued so now when I start to push down the center piece, everything lines up corner to corner, which will then allow me to do the same. Take this piece out here now. So now I'll just do the one side at a time. Again, I'll come up to the top, touch the corners together. And that way now, when I work down on the leather, everything lines up perfectly. Look at that. 
same will be done now on this piece over here. So always just make sure, let's just see what side we're working, make sure how all the pieces are coming together. Put the corners together. Again, just take those pieces and push them together. And because you've worked, stretch everything out. Because you've worked corner to corner now, everything lines up. Everything lines up as it should. Okay, my next step before I mark out the stitching now is I'm gonna take 120 grit sandpaper and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand those edges together. Because the cleaner you can get your edges before you mark them out, before you start stitching, the better everything is gonna turn out afterwards. Um, your stitching line will be straighter, uh, finishing off the edge is gonna be a lot easier. So I use a 120 grit sandpaper and if you've, your cuts and your gluing was done well, you can, you can see there, that's just about done. I'll do a few more passes on that and I'll be ready to mark and stitch. This puts you way ahead though when you, uh, on your edge finishing at least. All right, so the next steps obviously is stitching. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna mark the, the edges. I'm gonna use my creaser. I'm then going to uh, mark the, or at least position where the stitches are gonna go with my pricking iron. And then I'm gonna start stitching. So I'm just about to start uh, marking the stitching with the pricking iron over here. And one of the things that I always check for, even though we have checked for it already of where, with, where each pocket placement is, um, before I head through, I always come and just make sure that the teeth are in front of uh, the, the pockets where they need to be. If you've been following along on the PDF pattern um, that's available on my website, you'll notice that it should all line up if you're using a 8 SPR iron, um, where each one finds its correct position. So I can go ahead now and line that up. Give my mark. So what that's done is now, it's given the perfect placement between the, between the card pockets um, is a tooth. So in other words, a stitch is going to go over each of those uh, divisions. So you can see them there. So between that area there and that area, a stitch will fall over that, and that there and that there will be a, a stitch over. That's what you're wanting to achieve. Um, if you've cut and things are not quite the way that you need them, take your pricking iron and move the leather so in other words, the, the leather at this point before it's stitched, it's, it, it can be moved. You can take your bone folder and gently move the leather. So you can gently move it because if you are off, it's going to be such a slight amount um, that you can take your bone folder and just correct it to where it needs to be. Put your iron down again and once it's correct, do the punching. Guys, I did mention this in the how to hand stitch um, leather video which is obviously back on the, on the channel, but I just wanted to cover this point very quickly again. Before I get to any corner point, so any corner point being that one and that one as well, um, I'll come in here and I'll make sure that my, my iron before I hit is going to be in the correct position. Thankfully, this one is in the correct position. Uh, the pattern was um, cut where it needs to be cut. If it's not though, let's say you're a little bit off over there, you can take your bone folder I'm not, not talking about if it's a, a massive amount off, but if it's a little portion off, you can take your bone folder, push that piece of leather in, and then place your pricking iron. The same thing you can do is if you, if you are a little bit short, remember leather is quite flexible, take that leather and just stretch it a little bit. It's not gonna make any difference to the project. You're not stretching out a full stitch. Um, this will be obviously if it's just a, a portion of the stitch that you need to make way for, and that'll get you into the correct position for uh, the corners. So again, I've marked off to about the center point over there and I've taken my pricking iron and I've just gently taken it and marked out where it's going to be if it actually reaches the corner. So now I can take those same markings that I've got or the, the previous markings that I've got and I can see where I'm sitting. Am I going to be close enough? 
And there you can see, oh, I don't know if you're really going to see that, it's so small, but I'm probably, oh man, it's a minuscule amount, but it'll take me, it'll, it'll take me to a point of um, being that slightly, being slightly off of my corner. So I'm going to do what I just showed you how to do here, and that is I'm going to put my pricking iron in the hole, and I'm going to gently just push the leather, I'm just going to compress it that little bit. So now that when I mark it, there I can see where my next my, my hole will be there. Everything then lines up as it should. So just by just gently compressing that leather because I was a little bit short on that one, um, just by literally there, just gently compressing it, I'm now making sure that my corner position is correct. I've marked all the way to that corner over there, the bottom corner, but I'm not going to work my my way up. What I'm going to do is now I'm going to do as we started. I'm going to take my iron, I'm going to mark it where it is and make sure that it is, a stitch is going over each pocket. There I can see it is. So I will make sure on that, mark that piece of leather and then continue going down. And again, I will take I will take from the corner, I'll mark up again, and make sure that everything is lining up before I uh, continue marking that stretch. I'm just about to start stitching this thing up. Before I do though, I just want to mention, like with most of these smaller uh, um, luxury items that I do, my edge is marked three millimeters from the edge. That spacing between the edge, especially with the uh, uh, my preference for this size project and this kind of project, 8 SPR, 8 stitches per inch, um, 3 millimeters from the edge. For me, it looks aesthetically the best. It looks uh, very pretty and balanced. So, yeah, that's how this one is being made. I'm giving this project five times the length of the perimeter of the project. Um, rather, to, rather have a bit of excess thread than run short. So I hope that you are getting some value out of this, this video. If you are guys, please hit the subscribe below, like the video, and if you want to see the next videos that are coming up, hit that alert button that comes up. We are constantly adding extra how-tos to the channel. Guys, something that you're going to need to know if you are using the linen cable thread, because this is a linen thread, it is not going to burn like a poly thread. Um, and if you've been using poly thread, you'd obviously just use some heat over there and it, and it uh, pushes down. With this thread, you're going to get yourself any of the white glues, the craft glues. This is a fabric glue. And then again, I just use my the tip of my awl, put a little, little bit of that... Um, that glue on here and I take that thread that I've just snipped off and I push it in so I'm just placing it down into the neatening it up so it looks there it looks seamless what I like to do is now, again, I will just touch up the edges with a piece of sandpaper 
just in case there was sort of any shifts or movement while I was busy stitching. Um, and that's pretty straight and pretty neat. So I can carry on marking and then edge painting. So if you're going to be finishing off your edges with a, a decorative crease, whether it's an electric or a manual like the ones I've made for myself, um, the heat over here, guys, is, is touch hot. Um, so you want it warm enough where it's going to make a mark on the leather, but obviously not too hot that it scorches the leather. I would recommend if, it's your, if you're going to be trying this out, um, take a few scrap pieces of leather and get to feel the touch of what the correct temperature feels like uh, on the different types of leather that you get. So guys, just remember there is a, there is a full video on how I do edge painting um, on the channel. But I suppose the best thing I can say is that less is always more. Um, I like to work with very, very thin layers. Uh, obviously I use heat to um, burn this in and then to smooth it out but you don't have to use heat for a very long time before I had an electric edger uh, I used sandpaper you know you work with your different layers of sandpaper and very carefully and you get the job done so you can see again that I'm just putting a a light layer on on the edge concentrating while talking so I don't let that edge paint spill um, I don't go all the way to the edge as you might see what I, what I do is with the electric iron is I, I move that paint um, around with the iron so that way I don't have to risk having any sort of a spill over but if I do um, use a piece of rubber and it, it just comes off um, and I can see this project as well I'll probably put on I'm guessing around about three layers and then it'll be done. So that's layer one done already. I'm going to be able to move straight onto the onto the iron. If you are going to be using an electric iron, again, it's hot, but it's certainly not scorching off my fingers. This obviously works differently with each different kind of edge paint that you use. The one that I'm using here, um, it's I, I get the iron to a point where it's hot, but it's not sizzling off my off my fingertips. Um, and then I can start moving that paint around. I must say though as well guys, my fingertips probably take a bit more heat than than most people. Um, remember I do make knives, so I'm working with hot steel every day just about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not glowing. The, the end part is certainly not glowing. And you can see it's starting to move, the paint's starting to really not move around nicely. Home stretch over here, just taking my bone folder as the last movement, opening up all the all the pockets. Just see if there was any excess glue basically. Just gets that all where it needs to be. And there it is. And there it is. A chevre leather card wallet. So if you enjoyed any part of this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up there below. And if you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe. And um, we're going to be posting a lot more like this. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And thanks for following along.